Exactly. Uh, let me just say before I introduce our next guest, uh, I've been asked if we could just sort of uh, lower the ambient noise in the room and the chatter and all of this because uh, it's making it difficult for some people to hear. All right. Our next guest, let me start with Joe Watkins. Uh, he's the host of State Independence on Lighthouse TV. He's been blessed with an extraordinary life. He's had the opportunity to work in projects of uh, Queens to an office inside the President George H.W. Bush White House. And I must say I have particular affection when I finally realized he's also been on <clears throat> CNN. And uh, as with myself and Rick Santorum, we all collectively and individually drive CNN crazy. So. Uh, he did a great job. And he is, of course, with our friend Jeff Coleman, who has for over two decades served hundreds of individuals and causes. He designs brand identities and communications plans, and he leads community-wide discussions. Uh, he is a former member of the Pennsylvania House of Representatives. So without further ado, let me introduce uh, Joe and Jeff. Jeff also has a great first name. Well, good morning. And first of all, let me just say what an honor it is for Joe and I to be here. Joe and I reconnected. I first saw Joe on the campaign trail. Many of you remember a few years ago when he made uh, a run uh, for lieutenant governor, but he also was defeated by Rick Santorum. I was. Well, I was. Um, I saw Joe a few months ago, I guess a year ago now. Uh, preaching as soon as COVID started. Uh, Joe is the pastor, has been for many years of the oldest historically black Lutheran church in the city of Philadelphia. And instead of closing his church, he moved it online. And that's where I was scrolling through my feed one day and I saw Joe Watkins preaching on a Sunday morning. And I said, isn't that the guy from MSNBC and CNN and CNBC who was the other guy, always the counterpoint but doing it with grace and civility and dignity, but never compromising the conservative message. That was Joe Watkins. So I messaged him and I said, Joe, uh, we're looking to find a host for a new show we're gonna film out of Philadelphia called State of Independence. And would you be willing? He had never used Facebook Messenger before and somehow he got the message to reply to me in a half an hour later, that was a year ago, and we've now done 40, episodes of State of Independence, and if you visit uh, joewatkins.org, you'll see people like John Gizzi and others that speak not to the day's political issues, but uh, to the deeper um, uh, moment of the challenges that we're facing. And it is such an honor, Joe, to, to every week be able to do the show the with you. The honor's mine, Jeff. The honor's mine. Yeah. Um, Joe, I want to talk a little bit about a subject that uh, is, is challenging to talk about. Uh, let me, our topic today is civility. And uh, when many people hear that, they hear a lot of different things. They think, boy, civility means you're what? You're weak? You're weak, uh, you're, you're giving up, uh, you're giving in to the other side. And there's always, uh, when you say civility, there's always another side to point to. Did you realize what happened last night? Did you see what Speaker Pelosi did? Did you know what they did to President Trump? And it's a litany of things. Here's the challenge though, here's the problem. And as Joe and I looked at, at this issue of civility, Pew says something fascinating. A lot of surveys, Pew does, pretty accurate. They say that 80% of conservatives identify as? Christian. 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 80%. 80%. A pretty remarkable statistic. Now, what is the percent of atheists? 1%. So cons the Christian movement, the Christian cultural Christian, and the, the church attending Christian have found their home in the Republican Party and have found themselves largely in the conservative party. Here's the challenge. If Christians are in the public square, does that in any way change the way that the political debate is happening in America today? Should it? Uh, does it? Um, we talk a lot on State of Independence of the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, you know, self-control. So if we're flooding the marketplace with Christians, shouldn't our politics today be defined in a certain way? Joe, I want to ask you 
Uh, just a couple questions that I think people would be interested in. You worked for uh, President George H.W. Bush. And uh, you could look at the George H.W. Bush record in a lot of different ways. But the conservative record really does hold. And the era of conservatives that came out of him, he created a, And I worked for Dan Quayle before that. Dan right? Quayle. U.S. Senator Dan Quayle before he became vice president. Who we had on the show recently. Yeah. yeah. What, is, what is your sense? Because I don't think the policies have changed much. No, they haven't. We're still for lower taxes and smaller government right. and local control of schools. We're for, for individual responsibility. We're pro-life. We're pro-Second Amendment. We're all those things again. What is, what is different from the era that you were working with when you worked for President Bush on the inside to today? And some people say, you know what? We weren't winning then. So why well, don't we scrap well, the civility we, thing? We were. We, we did win. I mean, I, I worked for U.S. Senator Dan Quayle in the early 1980s, and a uh, good conservative, a good human being, good, good happens to be a Christian. And, uh, and wasn't and, shy about it. And wasn't shy about it. Yeah. He didn't wear a sleeve, but he wasn't shy about it. He, he really lived it. And, and we were talking about that on the, on the show just a few weeks back. I was saying to him, you know, what's your take on all this? And he said, you know, I just wish we hadn't got to the point where everything's a red state or a blue state. He said, just, just let it be states and let people be people and let them vote the way they, they think it's right to vote. He said, but I don't like categorizing. That's what Dan said. That's what Dan Quell said. And, and I, I thought about that. You know, I think to myself all the time, I'm, I'm a, a Christian guy. I'm a Christian person first because I'm always mindful of where I'm going to end up, my final destination. Hmm. You know, if my final destination was the ballot box with the voters, hmm. then I would, I would tailor. That's pretty depressing. Uh, yeah, it would be hard, depressing, right? That I, would, I would, I suppose, try to tailor my responses to the voters. Right. But ultimately, like every person in this place, I've got an expiration date on me. We all have to leave here, every one of us, no matter who we are, no matter what our station in life is. And we all have to give account for our life to the Almighty, to God. And, and I know that that's the case. And so is, I was driving here today, and I didn't always know where I was going, but I knew where I wanted to end up. And I had my little Waze app on. Some of you who are up with modern technology, as I'm trying to be. To avoid the police? Is that to, well, no, no, no. Oh. <laughs> Just no, no not, not the speed trap. You're the but. Christian, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I was trying to figure out you know, how to weave through the streets to get here. And, and the Waze app was just so faithful in telling me, take a right here, make a left. In two miles, you'll get off here. And, 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 and that's, that's what God's word is. God's word is our Waze app. God's word is our... I hear you, it, Joe. It, it's, but I hear people out there who are saying, okay, but that's your Sunday life. No, no, no. That's, right? that's the whole point. The whole point is it's your everyday life. I mean, we, people would like to categorize and say, well, you know, Christianity is something I do on Sunday between the hours of 11 and 1. But, but, but what Jesus says is that if, if, you, if you follow me, that's a 24-7 thing. And, and, and what are the rules? The rules are to love God with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your soul, all of your strength. And that's more than a notion. That's, that's serious. And, and then if you say you love me, then love the people around you like you love yourself. But love doesn't win elections. Well, it can. It can. Okay. It, it can if you're honest and you just tell the truth. If you're not afraid to, to, to admit sometimes you're wrong. If you're not afraid to be honest about your warts. Who here doesn't have warts? I mean, we all have warts. We all have shortcomings. We all make mistakes. But that could, perfect. I'm devil's advocate here. But that gives the other side an advantage. The more vulnerable you are, the more you admit your mistakes. If you have to say you're sorry, you're giving the enemy a direct mail piece. You're giving them a, a piece of yourself that they can twist and use. Because you know what the other side does, Joe, right? right, right. I mean, that's what as long as you keep in mind who the enemy is, you know, as long as you know who the enemy is, you know, the enemy is, 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 is Satan. The enemy is not other Americans, you know, not even Democrats. We may not agree with them, but they're not our enemies. They're other Americans like we are. What makes our country special? I've traveled around the world, I've seen, I've been to Africa, I've been to Japan, I've, I've, I've been to, to, to all over Europe, I've been to the Middle East, and I've seen people in, in beautiful places, but there's no place like this place. This is a special place. God has put his, his hand on us. And, 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 and in order for this place to be everything that I think God meant for it to be, when George Washington and the, and the founding fathers of this country made this country, uh, we've got to love each other. 
We've got to love each other. We, we, we have to never forget to stop loving each other. We've got to love each other. And we've got to treat each other like we want to be treated. It doesn't mean we can't yeah. disagree. It doesn't mean we can't disagree, that we can't have a different opinion. You know, I, I, yeah. we, you know all of us in this room, we, we, we hold certain core beliefs. And, and that's, that's okay, and everybody may not agree with them, but, right. but how you talk to people, how you treat people. Well, give, let me give you an example. Um, this last week, uh, our friend John Stone Street, who hosts Breakpoint uh, Commentary, took over at the Chuck Colson Center. Many of you are familiar with the work of Chuck Colson. Uh, he did a commentary with, um, with a professor who had a speech impediment, grew up with a speech impediment. And he, the, the professor said, I want you to run this commentary this week on Breakpoint. And here, here's how the commentary went, I'll give you a quick summary. It says, we disagree with President Biden on abortion, on the definition of the culture, and we, all of these things, right? But let me speak to you as someone who has a speech impediment. I have watched my brothers and sisters, my friends in the conservative movement, when the president missteps and speaks in a certain way, the memes come out and we feel that because Joe Biden is on the wrong side of the issues that relate to the dignity of the individual and the dignity of life, and we have different conclusions and all of that, that the sarcasm and the vitriol and the anger comes out. And then we say, but it wasn't as bad as what they did. And what happened, uh, Stones, I was with John um, in Philadelphia this week, and he says, you would not believe the mail I got from Christians who said, how dare you give that man any dignity because he's slaughtering millions of babies and he's doing all that. How do you give him any dignity at all? What do you say to that, Joe, in this particular moment when we look at people and say, they don't deserve it. They don't deserve to be loved. Love, 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 Joe, but they don't deserve it because they're disqualified by their public policy and their political views. So let me tell you about the heart of Christ. Uh, it's encapsulated in a story. There were, a mob of people, a group of people, of citizens were going to stone somebody, a woman who had done something worthy of being stoned. And the mob was ready to put her to death. That was the way that you, you put people to death back then. I got hit by a stone when, some, one, once when I was a kid. So a guy hit me with a rock and it hurt. So I can imagine being stoned to death. And, and, and the mob is ready to do its deed. And Jesus, Jesus looks at them and he says, let he or for that matter, she who was without sin cast the first stone. And one by one, they put, they, they put their rocks down. And he said, well, if they find no fault with you, neither do I. Go and sin no more. That's the heart of the, of the one I follow. And that same heart is supposed to be in me. And it ought to be evident to people. And I don't mean that to say that uh, that we're weak, because yeah. we're not. It takes the strength, especially in today's world and culture, uh, to, to stand up and, and to say, I follow Jesus. Right. It takes strength to do that. But that's the heart that is supposed to be in us. So when we deal with people with whom we don't agree, when we're in this intense battle politically for the right, how we handle ourselves, what we say, and the way we say it matters to God. And he is our judge. This room is filled with people who are, uh, have been part of extraordinary political campaigns. Melissa Hart here in the front I remember. The, wrote the first big check to my campaign for $500 as a 25-year-old right out of Liberty University. There was no reason she should have written that check. John Gizzi in the back, you know, who's the political um, encyclopedia, being able to tie all of these stories together and say, you know, we were here before, or remember 1960 or 64, you know, we, we've been here before. It's context that they provide. What has lost, I think we have lost in this political culture is more than I will not call and concede. I will not make the concession call in the case my lawyers can overturn an election. I'm not speaking about any particular, this has been happening for the last 10 or 15 years. The small dignities of a campaign and we think, well, if we do it their way, if we adopt their style, the style that we say we despise, I think what we are in danger of is losing not just our sunniness and our optimism and our joy, we look pretty sour to some, but we lose the moral advantage in the, of, of the arguments that we're making. When we say a child in the womb deserves dignity and respect, 
by virtue of the fact that they are alive and it doesn't matter if there's a heartbeat or they are uh, they are out of the womb or they're in college from from conception to natural death we believe they deserve dignity we don't get to as soon as they come out of the womb turn on them and say just because you're on social media making a dumb argument we get a chance now to rip apart your humanity by using a little sarcasm a little vitriol a little rudeness and a little meanness i i, I loved what uh, president reagan uh would say over and over and over again and now it's been 35 40 years ago but he would always talk about us about us about this country as a city a shining city on a hill and 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 that's a wonderful a wonderful uh, uh, simile uh, from 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 God's word, you know, where 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 Jesus tells us that if if His Spirit is in us, if we follow Him, we're supposed to be that 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 light shining in the darkness, that city on the hill. We're supposed to be that that that, that the salt of the earth, you know. We're supposed to be what seasons this country right. and what seasons the earth by how we live and the way we live and by what we say, by how we say it. And uh, I loved his attitude. I thought it was the right one. I thought that uh, uh, that sense that he had for us as a country, uh, especially in light of where we, who God put us here to be for the rest of the world, was, uh, was right on point. I know our time, our is, time, up. Is, up. Our time uh, is up. And I, I just I want to say this, just in closing. Please don't hear this as a lecture or an indictment. This is a conversation we have in ourselves every time we go on the air um, or have a guest on. The question is, are we communicating those fruits of the spirit, or is it coming out like, you know, like a bad violin or an untuned piano? Do we come across so sour that nobody is hearing the words that we speak? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you all for thank having you. Today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.